What's up guys? Welcome back. So today we are going to be playing with the new Westman Atelier iPods eyeshadows. I have them right here. I am super excited to share them with you guys. But first I do feel like I need to acknowledge what is going on right now. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you might not know where I stand on everything. But in my last video, which was pre-filmed, I posted a set of links to donate to causes that benefit the cause right now, if you like, why is she avoiding talking about like saying it? It's because YouTube will demonetize me. This is still my job. And if you're looking for a, an example of systemic oppression, there it is right there. Okay. YouTube, like get your head right. But I do want to say that I stand with the black voices on this issue. We need to put our money where our mouth is. That is why I'm posting donation links. If you can afford to donate, do donate. Also, vote and vote with your dollar in the meantime do your research and also educate yourself and educate the people around you rabble rousing on instagram is not going to affect change in a police force we need to contact our uh political representatives and things like that so yes i will again post links down below uh in the comments of resources where you can learn more where you can donate if you feel able to and you want to but also the reason that I'm continuing to make content is for the people who commented on my last video and on my Instagram, people who I know are allies and who still need a moment. We need our mental health. We need our, our heads straight right now in order to be the best versions of ourselves that we can. And we shouldn't punish ourselves for needing a break for a second. So, that is what I'm trying to provide here. If you think that that is insensitive, I'm really, really sorry. But for the people who need that right now, I know I need that right now. I have had a stress headache for like four days straight. Um, and I know that that's by design. I should, but it doesn't stop it from being exhausting. So I want you guys to know where I stand. If you wanna keep talking to me about this kind of thing, please come find me on Instagram. So it does feel super freaking weird to then just like switch over to talking about makeup, but I know a lot of you guys are really eager to know everything about these new eyeshadows from Westman Atelier. They did send them to me. I'm very grateful to Westman Atelier for sending them to me as soon as they came out. So I'm gonna move you guys in. We're gonna apply them, talk about them, do everything that we normally do. And again, just try and decompress for a few minutes. <sighs> okay guys, so. As far as my complexion is concerned, I have on pretty much everything that I was wearing in my last video. I did a big tutorial step-by-step -step on how I layer cream products. If you are interested in seeing this look kind of come back together, I will list the actual products that I use because some of the blushes were different, but it is more or less the same complexion situation. So this is the new Westman Atelier. These are called the iPods. And I'm like, iPods, really? Yeah, iPods, E-Y-E, obviously. These are the three shades that are in the Nui. We all know how terrible I am at pronouncing French words, but this is the Le Nui. <laughs> collection and they have a day one as well. This just happens to be the one that they chose to send me. So I am actually, I'm dressed a little bit more evening because I wanted to uh, match, you know, the, the eye look that I'm gonna be going for here today. And the shades in this are Vin Rouge, Vin Rouge probably. <laughs> so sorry, I'm sorry French people. Noir, Noir, God, can't you just stop? And Champagne, which I found to be so appropriate because yes, sure. We call colors champagne all the time because well, I mean, you know, if it's kind of bubbly, sparkly, you know, pale color, it kind of reminds you of champagne anyway. But at the same time, the last time that we talked about Westman Atelier on my channel, I want to say it was the $62 mascara. And that was when I went off about if I'm going to pay that much money, I want eye champagne. And now at least purportedly I have eye champagne, which is funny. So anyway, at least I think it's funny. So we're gonna go ahead and apply these now. I watched Gucci apply the day set on her Instagram and she just basically designed this so that there was a main color, a highlight color, and then a, a deep color that you can use for your, your crease or an eyeliner or what have you. And I'm going to use both my fingers and brushes to show you guys sort of the, uh, the possibilities and the potential of these products. And then we'll again, get into ingredients and things like that. So first of all, actually what I wanna do is put on a primer. I'm gonna go in with the iLift 360 Waterproof Primer from Thrive. It is just the best eye primer that I have found. And when I 
wore these, I should say, this is not a first impression, when I wore these uh, Westman Atelier eyeshadows for about six hours, I did notice some creasing. And so I wanna try and mitigate that a little bit, but it's mainly because they don't have any silicones in them. Westman Atelier, if you are unfamiliar, I'm a little discombobulated. Like I'm not doing my normal video in order of the way that I would normally do it. Cause it's just hard for me to get back in the mode right now. But anyway, <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with Westman Atelier, it is a very luxury, clean brand that was started and is owned by the makeup artist Gucci Westman. She really prides herself on having these very concise collections. That's why this is three eyeshadows. It's meant to be easy and it's also meant to be, you know, a very luxurious kind of investment piece that's almost collectible and interacting with it is just really, really nice. So that's why I am, I guess at this point, kind of a Westman Atelier collector. I don't have everything that, they, that they've made, but I do like to have uh, an educated opinion on the products for the most part um, because they are so luxurious. I want to know whether they're worth your money. So anyway, <laughs> going in on top of my now crease-free eyelids with Vin Rouge. And this is just a really pretty burgundy color. I think that these kinds of colors look really, really good on light eyes. You know, obviously it's gonna have a little bit of like a red thing to it. And so it goes very nicely, like contrasts against blue and can make that really pop or green. But I also think that it does great. Well, that's a good look khaki, um, but it does great with brown eyes as well. I, at least on me, I just think that it, it looks really nice. It's a, it's a good shade of burgundy that's not sick, you know? Nothing against that. I've definitely had people, there's a girl who commented like on my Freck Beauty video and she was like, look, as a 22 year old, I'm going for that sick eyes look, you know? And I was like, you do you girl, you know? I think that that is definitely a vibe. I am definitely not discounting that vibe, but this is not that vibe. And I'm honestly proud that a 22 year old would watch one of my videos. <laughs> I had no idea that I had that kind of, uh, that kind of potential uh, appeal, I guess. Okay, so I'm applying a lot, I'm tapping. This is not as difficult to work with as I'm making it look. I'm gonna pull a brush out right now and just kind of blend this, but I am, you know, just laying the product down and then it stays pretty movable. So you can get a lot of gradient spreadability out of it. It doesn't, it doesn't really dry down. Oh, I should say, even though they sent this to me, that's just PR. This is not uh, like sponsored or something. I'm super grateful to them for sending it to me because I would have bought it anyway, probably, but you know, save a girl $88, appreciate that. A little goes a long way in terms of just the ability to get a super sheer wash out of it if you want to. It does build, but I feel like it has a, like, a harder time building than it does spreading out really, really, you know, thinly. It's like it likes being sheer a little bit better. So that's where we're going to start. It's almost like a transition shade and you can see I lost most of the opacity of it. I don't have any of the glitter payoff. I'll go back in kind of at the end and lay a little bit more of that burgundy down so that we have more local color of that actual shade. But I'm next going to go in with Noir and um, I'm going to take another one of that same brush from Thrive, just a different one, and dip it in there. They're very soft. They're sort of a powder cream hybrid and we will compare them to some other products in my collection a little bit later on in the video so that you guys can get a sense of what i would compare them to but I'm going to just put this black shade right here in my crease is that the most pigmented black in the world no and i don't think that she meant for it to be i think that you know what gucci is going for is user-friendly makeup that makes itself accessible to a lot of different maturities of skin. And I do think that cream products are very flattering on mature skin, but we do have to kind of take some precautions uh, in terms of making sure that this doesn't crease horribly because I don't have super greasy eyelids. Obviously my, my eyes open and close just like everybody else's <laughs> biology. But I definitely think that, you know, without proper precautions or if you laid a bunch of cream products down underneath this and didn't powder it or didn't prime it, you might have some creasing issues. And I don't even have the oiliest eyelids in the world. So you can see that the opacity here is, for a, for a black eyeshadow, like not giving you black, you know? It's, and I would be like, oh, maybe it just looks black in the pan and it's supposed to be gray, but they called it black. <laughs> so like, I don't know. 
And I will go in with this afterwards and use it as a liner to show you guys like what kind of, you know, saturation and color impact you can get from it. But spread out this way, you're just gonna get a watercolor wash. And it's not ashy. I don't think that it is going to look bad on deeper skin tones, but I don't think that it's going to give you the saturation and like shadow effect probably that you would be expecting from it if you have deeper skin. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna go in with a pencil brush. This is the E30 from Sigma. And I'm gonna go in with Champagne. Am I, am I dating myself? That's like an SNL reference, a really old SNL reference, anyway. I think that this is my favorite shade out of the three. It just has a lot of punch to it. It's actually really hard for me a lot of times to get a, an inner corner highlight that actually pops because my skin is so stinking pale that this has iciness without being glittery and it does actually show up. Plus, when you spread it out on your brow bone, ooh, she pretty. Like we are talking a classy highlight. You know, there are highlighters that are a little bit glittery and make us look like we're trying a little too hard. This one is, you can just build it and get that beautiful glint of it catching the light without ever risking any kind of glitter. And it's got a little bit of coverage to it, which is nice because your girl's got a lot of veins, <laughs> a lot of purple veins under there. I'm not ashamed of them, but you know, if it's gonna kind of disguise them, I'm not going to disagree. Okay, so. The thing I feel like is the most worth experimenting with here, now that we have just the three shades laid down, I'm gonna go under my eyes too, but it is just the buildability. I want to kind of show you guys what the capabilities and also the limitations are of the buildability here. So I'm gonna go back in with Vin Rouge, which means red wine, by the way, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I'm going to very much tap and try and build that opacity because that is essentially what Gucci says that you can and should do. It's what she encourages that, you know, there's versatility here. You can, you know, build the saturation up of any of these shades. And like I said, you know, use the black one as an eyeliner and things like that. The extent to which they do that is what I kind of want to show you guys. So yes, you know, I can get a burgundy local color out of that. I could even take my finger in the black and get black local color out of that, you know, if I build up that pigment. Is it easy? I'm not gonna say it's easy. It's easier to use a brush. And so I have found that kind of laying the product down and then blending it out where you kind of want to hide seams is the best way to go, but it is a little bit difficult because it will just kind of blend forever and it can get muddy. And it is a little bit more difficult in that sense because I feel like the pigmentation goes away really quickly. Like when you start to blend, you lose the impact of the pigmentation really, really quickly. And that might be the aesthetic that you're looking for. I think that from a beginner's standpoint, if you're gonna have like really deep shades, you know, this is a pretty okay way to go because it's not going to get you into trouble. And I always complain about that with eyeshadows. I'm like, oh, you know, I've gotten myself into a hole and I can't get my way out. But I also will say that there is like an opposite end of the spectrum where something is a little too blendable. And I think that these verge on being too blendable. Do you see how I just kind of tried to blend my crease and the, the color wiped off? <sighs> That's kind of what you're dealing with here. I'm gonna go underneath my eyes with a little stubby brush from Thrive. This is the eyeliner smudge brush. One of my favorite shapes of brushes. And I'm gonna go back in with the red wine color. Give myself some smokiness, you know? And I think that that's what this is going for is a smoky eye, but a smoky eye, you know, I've watched a ton of tutorials on smoky eyes. It looks at the end like you have taken something and just done this with it, but it's actually pretty tactical. You know, there's an order of operations to it. And sometimes I don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> just kinda, just kinda doing the best that I can. I do like how the burgundy though kind of picks up the different like blush and lip shades. You know, it's got a nice sort of rosy undertone to it that I feel like lends itself nicely to a natural face of makeup, even though it is uh, like a, you know, a moody eyeshadow set. People are like, what does moody makeup mean? I'm like, evening? I don't know. That's just my word for like evening. So this brush actually does a good job of like laying stuff down 
and reinforcing a little bit more of that saturation without wiping it off. So it might take just a little bit of playing with them for you to get what you want out of them, or they might just not be for you. I wanna see what happens if I take the pale shade and put it on top. That's actually really nice. I feel like it lifts it up a little bit, even though it's more subtle than I expected it to be. Okie dokie. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna say that that was like, it, it felt like it did it for me kind of thing. I kind of don't know when to stop because you kind of feel like every time you lay product down, you're kind of picking more product up. So now I'm going to take a little, one of these, this is actually an e.l.f. one, but this is the Eyebrow Duo brush. It's my spoolie on one end and, you know, one of those really great little angled guys on the other. And I'm gonna dip that in the black, zoom in as much as I can for you guys. I'm just gonna smudge that into my lash line. In my last video, I showed you guys my very, very precise cat eye. And this is, if you're expecting that, it's not gonna be that, but it is, there is an effect. Okay, I will say absolutely no fallout, obviously, because they're like a cream powder hybrid. I'm going to put on a little bit of mascara real quick. I'm so glad that I don't technically have anywhere to go. I like put on a bra today thinking, oh, I'm gonna look, you know, cute in this dress for this video, which I'm shocked this dress still fits me. But anyway, I put on a bra. I don't even know why, honestly. I just kind of, you know, wanted to feel put together. And it lasted like 10 minutes of me like plugging in some new lights and just, you know, preparing to film and everything. And I was like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know how I would do pregnancy if I had to actually go show up somewhere right now. Okay guys. That is the, the vibe, as we say, the, um, the final look here on my eyes. And now we're going to chat about the actual release itself. And I'm going to give you guys all of the thoughts that I have compiled in my own brain, uh, having tried these a few times now. I'm actually going to move you guys out. This is just, this is a lot. Okay. So let's chat about the release. So iPods eyeshadow, they are $88 for the set of three, and there is Le Nuit and Le Jour, the day and the night, or the days and the nights. And if $88 throws you for a loop, stay tuned. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a few alternatives if that is like not within your budget, but you still are like interested in these. So Luminous Eyeshadow Trio provides soft definition and a sumptuous finish using only the cleanest ingredients. This velvety cream powder, all right khaki, this velvety cream powder hybrid formulation is designed for comfort, blendability, and rich color payoff. Innovative magnetic pods snap together or apart for easy portability. I will say that this packaging is you know, exactly what you would expect from them. It's all magnetic, which is funny, so everything sticks together. They actually snap closed, which I think is really lovely, and then they magnetize pretty strongly to one another. So I like that a lot. It is, it's a very secure feeling situation with cat hair in it. No silicones, no parabens, no PEGs, no phthalates, no talc, no synthetic fragrances or pigments, vegan and no animal testing. And they did release this with two brushes. One is sort of a pat on situation and one is a blender brush situation. And they are also synthetic and cruelty free. I'm going to say this in as least performative way as I possibly can, but they're all on light skinned models. <laughs> it's hard to tell. So uh, I hope that they sent these to some deeper skinned uh, creators so that people can kind of see them in action. Um, for them, they are sheer colors. And so I, I, can't, I, don't, I literally don't know what they're going to look like on deeper skin. I don't think they'll be ashy, but I'm not sure if they'll really like show up. And the thing that I see in this description uh, that sticks out to me the most is rich color payoff. I just don't necessarily feel like they have super rich color payoff. I think that they are mainly meant to be blendable and they do a pretty good job of that. Key ingredients, silky emollients derived from coconut oil and fatty acids replace silicones for luxurious slip and blendability. Featherweight rice and plant extracts provide a velvety smooth application and molten second skin effect. Molten is true. That's the other thing I do feel like you know, it does kind of stay movable. So I will actually stick a photo in of me after wearing it for like six hours yesterday and you can see the creasing situation. It's not terrible, 
but it is it does exist. Naturally dried pigments bound together by a unique oil gel suspension system create an elastic cushion sensation and luminous melting finish for flattering wearability. So I used these, you know, tried them, swatched them, put them on my face, wore them for a while to get a feel for them before I got on camera. And I, I just couldn't get away from the comparison to this. So this is the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur Eyeshadow Palette. Bounce and Blur is their cream powder hybrid formula from Bare Minerals. But <laughs> the first ingredient in the Bounce and Blur is dimethicone, which is a silicone. And so they lean hard on that stuff. I'm not sure whether they have talc in them or not. No talc. I just did a, like a search on the page for the word talc with the ingredients up. So these do not contain talc, but they do contain a lot of dimethicone and that is what makes them have the bounce and blur texture that they do. If you are looking for a bounce and blur formula that does not, sorry, I mirror everybody, that does not contain silicones or any anything fishy. I mean, it's literally put together, you know, as cleanly as absolutely possible, then, you know, this is super, super comparable. And I'm going to swatch them next to each other because actually the shades are different than I, like they're more different from each other than I thought they were going to be. I really thought that like this was going to be Vin Rouge, this was going to be Noir, and this was going to be Champagne, but they're pretty different. Okay, so alternating here, you have the Bounce and Blur and then the Westman Atelier. And so this is Bounce and Blur Burgundy, you know, whatever it's called in there. This is Vin Noir. So, I mean, you're going to, Vin Noir, Vin uh, Rouge. This is going to be more of a wine color. This is a little bit more of like a terracotta. Then you have the palest shade in the Bounce and Blur and you have Champagne from Westman Atelier. Champagne is much more champagne. It's much more of a highlight shade. Whereas this, I would liken to a transition shade for someone who's complected like me. And this is the deepest shade in, I think it's called Sepia Sky or something. Um, is that right? Nope, Purple Twilight. Uh, from, uh, from Bounce and Blur from uh, Bare Minerals. And then this is, it has lint on me. Um, <laughs> Noir from uh, Westman Atelier. So we're not talking an exact dupe here in terms of the shades. And I do think that the shades in the Westman Atelier are actually a little bit more useful if you're gonna distill it down to just three. But uh, if silicones are not important to you, if it is absolutely okay with you that there are silicones in your products, obviously you're probably not going to be going towards these like really, really high end cl clean beauty companies if that's the case. But if that's the case, this is a $29 palette that's a pretty good affordable dupe for it. Whereas these you are literally paying for the fact that you are getting a very, you know, similar formula and that same workability, that same spreadability. Neither of these is particularly pigmented, I'll be totally honest with you. I mean, I picked up some really, really like aggressive swatches here, but uh, they, they both spread out really similarly and have a harder time building. And that's just kind of the nature of these kinds of formulas. But if what you're looking for is that with the cleanest ingredients possible, that's, I feel like what makes it worth it to spend your money on Westman Atelier, outside of the fact that, you know, you are, getting that luxury experience, just the really heavy packaging and just feeling like you're interacting with something that is, it's just higher end, you know? Now, one thing that does also, it warrants mentioning, is a lot of people take issue with the fact that a lot of clean beauty companies hinge their ingredients list on coconut oil as if it irritates nobody's skin. I don't have a problem with coconut oil, especially on my eyes, but Westman Atelier does use coconut oil. I assume it's very, high-end coconut oil, but it's coconut oil nonetheless. And so if you are sensitive to that, uh, then, you know, understand that these have that in them. And the, the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur does not. So, final thoughts on the Westman Atelier iPods. If you are a Westman Atelier collector, if you are the kind of person who absolutely loves this aesthetic and what you're looking for is a sheer wash of color, then these are going to stack up, I feel like, so to speak, to your expectations. But for me, I find them a little bit difficult because I do want more precision. That's me talking personally as, you know, one makeup user. When I'm putting on eyeshadow, I want there to be some kind of stay put factor that gives me a little bit of precision when I want to draw a line on my eyelid. I do want it to be a little bit sharper. I just want to have that option. 
and I feel like this doesn't really give you that option because these are not particularly pigmented or particularly saturated. You can dig your finger in there like crazy and you can pat that product on, but as soon as you try and blend it, it will go sheer. So that might be your thing. I can hear the comments right now being like, that is exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> you know, especially because I, again, I always say this, I am not a makeup artist since so I've only worked on this face. Every time I sit here and postulate about whether or not it's going to work on deeper skin tones or mature skin or anything like that, I am doing just that. I'm postulating. I'm doing the best that I can to make an educated guess, but I don't have practical experience in order to tell you for sure. And there probably are going to be people out there who are like, for my mature skin this looked incredible for my deep skin tone this was the perfect wash of color and so I would say that you know if you don't look like me <laughs> seek out uh, creators who do if you want to really see these in action because they're funky they're a little different you know they're definitely like different for uh, a reason the way that West Atelier tends to make things that, that are different for a reason I definitely think that like their vital skin foundation stick that I'm wearing right now that I wear literally almost every day is different for all the right reasons and that's what like sets it apart for me from so many other you know concealers and foundations and I do think that Westman Atelier goes about those things that way where they try and make these hero products that are concise they're edited they're made to be a certain way and I don't think that this is I don't think this is a bad look at all I think it's really really pretty um, especially for a smoky eye I do have a hard time doing a smoky eye that doesn't have really hard lines of demarcation and I feel like for that it does end up looking good. It's just a little harder to work with than I thought that it was going to be. So yes, I hope that that equips you with the knowledge and information that you needed to feel at least as much as I can provide um, equipped to make a decision for yourself whether this is what you thought it was going to be or if it is something that is worth your money. Makeup is super, super personal and while I am going to continue working with these and I, I think that they will still have a place in my collection, they are a little bit more difficult to work with and harder to get kind of the look that I'm going for that might keep me from reaching from them more often. So that's just my personal take. Let me know what you guys think down below because again, like I said, I only have me and my face as experience. So if this is something that you've either tried or you have completely different skin than I do and it's something that, you know, you've used something that's similar to this, fill me in, let me know, be like, actually this works incredibly well on X. I would love to know that, you know, that's the kind of thing that helps me inform people in the future. So uh, definitely tell me that in the comments. And guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that this is the needed relief that people might want right now. And if it's not, feel free to not watch, feel free to, ignore my content I totally understand but for those of us who are really really like overwhelmed right now it's okay to take a little break so thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy this do give it a thumbs up if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel do hit the button down below and subscribe I would love it if you guys did hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today please stay well stay safe I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one.